Hey, welcome back to the shop. My name is John, and today we are working for free. So if you remember in our last video when I was building this set of turbo manifolds for this 3600 horsepower diesel engine, and I was telling you how I didn't really like these formed collectors that I was using. And I was under a bit of pressure to get these done in a very short amount of time, so I made the very wise decision of just steaming forward. Now, I do regret that because I woke up to this text only a couple days later, and I thought, you know, today is going to be a fantastic stress-free day. So once I got these things in my hand, I realized what had happened here. Unfortunately, these formed collectors are not up to the task of being a collector on a 3600 horsepower diesel pulling truck that glows bright cherry red during operation and has over 200 psi of pressure on the inside. There's just something about it and these things opened up like a can opener. Look at these welds broken on both sides. You can see the light coming through on this shot. Wow. <laughs> I don't know how you would have fixed these. These are very challenging to fix. I was very stressed about this. That was until I remembered that my friend Shearfab makes the nicest billet collectors. These are machined from solid stainless steel blocks. They are much stronger and they should slip onto this collector. So I've got these manifolds back in my shop and we are going to jig these things up to the table and see if we can retrofit these billet collectors into place and save this set of manifolds. Nice, okay, that went really fast and smooth. So you can see how easy it was to build this jig. I'm just using a trace Sharpie mark on the table that I line up by eye perfectly. And then these plasma cut plates that bolt up perfectly to the other end. So this is pretty repeatable. Surprisingly, these manifolds sit quite square on my vertical bandsaw. So I'm just gonna tape up the tube so I don't scratch them up and I'm gonna push it right through. All right, that went pretty smooth. Just gotta cut the flanges off of the outlets of these manifolds now. Okay, we've got our reducing cones cut off of these flanges. I am going to machine this weld off and I need to get this piece that was welded in this recess out of there. So these are the reducing cones that go from three inch on the outlet of the collector to two and a half inch on the inlet of the flange that goes up to the turbo. And I chose to get these new because I didn't want to cut right on a weld and then have to re-weld that same spot again. That can weaken the stainless steel, uh, not by much typically, but this is just such an extreme application. I want to make sure that I was following the best practices so I wasn't making a third video about my failures. These manifolds are actually sitting at a beautiful blue patina and that means they haven't gotten that hot because a little bit hotter and they will go to their natural poop brown. That's where turbo manifolds like to sit. Now no matter what we need to get all of the soot out of the inside of these tubes and get the color off of the outside of the tubes so we can make sure that we are welding to the best standards possible. I knew these were going to be a tight fit, 
So I am just manipulating the tube slightly. Uh, you're going to see me shortly modifying the collector. And that's all to get these to slip together. Remember, I did not build these with this collector in mind, and it's much, much tighter than the original collector I used. So there's going to be a little bit of finagling involved to get these things fit up. I don't want to tack that in place. I think I'm gonna. Man, still not even close here. Almost. Well, I think I'm going to risk it. I think I'm going to weld these all in place and uh, it makes sense now, but hopefully it makes sense later. Well, what do you know? It actually didn't make sense later. What you see me doing here is welding the star into place and it's flush with the end of the tubes. And what I really needed to do was recess that star in past the tubes by about a quarter inch. Now I did this on the second one, don't worry, but I just made it a little bit harder on myself to make the connection you're gonna see me doing later. Oh, it just fits on like butter now. Oh, perfection, absolute perfection. That's just like I didn't f it up. Straight as shit. Wow, that is incredible. So easy, except we're gonna be arguing over space here. So what you see me doing here is I'm welding up the inside of the collector by putting the torch right inside and I'm welding the four ends of the star on the inside of there. Now you don't typically have to do it this way, but as I mentioned before, how I kind of screwed up this first one by not recessing that star by about a quarter inch, so I'm just going to make my life a little easier and uh, add some certainty to these things sealing up perfect by welding the inside. I'm also using this little back purging tool. It's got a uh, furic cup on the end, just a welding cup on the end, and it's on this you know, manipulatable arm. And that allows me to put backing gas wherever I need it. So I'm just putting it in the corners here because I am kind of using a lot of amps on the inside to seal it up and I want to make sure that it doesn't blow through and sugar on the backside. So now I'm getting this thing ready to back purge so we can do the final welding on the collector. So I am using these very, very lightly rolled pieces of Scotch-Brite and I'm using them as diffusers and sticking them into the EGT ports. So that's what's going to exhaust the gas on the inside and I'm gonna feed it in from the collector end. So now that this thing is wrapped up, I want to know for sure that it's not coming back, that it's not gonna have any problems, because we've had enough problems. So I am going to pressure test these things. I really recommend pressure testing on nearly everything you weld. I am so surprised at the things that I miss, you know, that the things that look good that actually aren't. Uh, 
So I pulled out the EGT bungs and I replaced them with these 8th inch MPT plugs. And I'm using this rubbery foam on the bottom. I'm just going to clamp it right to the table. That seals up the entire head flange. I'm going to use a purge plug on the other end. So I'm just going to use my blowgun with a rubber tip, push it right into the purge plug. Now this will not take a lot of pressure, I'll tell you that right now. It's going to be just enough to put some pressure inside of these tubes, spray all of the weld joints, and you're going to be looking for a bunch of concentrated foam. Here's an example of what it looks like when you find a leak. Even though this is coming from the bottom of the head flange, you can see that it's just, you know, exhausting bubbles out of it. I tested this manifold and I actually did find a bit of a problem which I sealed up very quickly with the welder. Done. Tested the other one. Good to go. Well, that's all she wrote on the repair on our turbo manifolds. These things are going to be picked up by the customer today and be installed and run. So we'll see how that goes. I'll probably throw a video into this video uh, if that goes well. I am going to sleep a lot better at night knowing that these are in good shape now and that we are able to save these headers. I was really, really concerned about what we were gonna do with these. Now we did learn, I learned, hopefully we learned that uh, form collectors, they do not have enough structural integrity to handle the pressures that this is running at nearly 4,000 horsepower. So. Uh, that's like almost a made up number <laughs> of horsepower. So sheer fab making these billet collectors doing a great job at it. I am pretty much exclusively going to use these on my upcoming header builds. I hope this was useful for you, uh, learning a little bit on how I temporarily jigged these to accurately put them back together, as well as the pressure testing at the end. I hope you pressure test all your headers, pressure test everything you can. Hey, as always, remember down below in the comments, let me know if I missed anything here. If you have any questions, be happy to answer you there. Otherwise, I'd love if you consider to like this video, maybe subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. And uh, other than that, I'll see you on the next one and have a lovely day.